The last question was asked for the first time. Half in chest on May 21st, 2061, at the time when humanity first stepped into the light. The question came about as a result of a $5 bet over highballs. And it happened in this way. Alexander Adel and Bertram Lupoff were two of the faithful attendants of Multivac. As well as any human could, they had at least a vague notion of the general plans of relays and circuits that had long since grown past the point where any single human could possibly have a firm grasp over the whole. Multivac was self-adjusting and self-correcting. It had to be, for nothing human could adjust and correct it quickly enough or even adequately enough. So Adel and Lupov attended the monstrous giant only lightly and superficially, yet as well as any man could. They fed it data, adjusted questions to its needs, and translated the answers that were issued. Certainly they, and all others like them, were fully entitled to share in the glory that was Multivax. For decades, Multivax had helped design the ships and plot the trajectories that enabled man to reach the moon, Mars, and Venus. But past that, Earth's poor resources could not support the ships. Too much energy was needed for the long trips. Earth exploited its coal and uranium with increasing efficiency. But there was only so much of both. But slowly Multivac learned enough to answer deeper questions more fundamentally. And on May 14, 2061, what had been theory became fact. The energy of the sun was stored, converted, and utilized directly on a planet-wide scale. All Earth turned off its burning coal, its fissioning uranium, and flipped the switch that connected all of it to a small station, one mile in diameter, circling the Earth at half the distance of the moon. All Earth ran by invisible beams of sun power. It's amazing when you think about it, said Adel. All the energy we can possibly ever use for free. Enough energy if we wanted to draw it to make all Earth into a big drop of impure iron and still never miss the energy so used. All the energy we could ever use forever and ever and forever. Lipov cocked his head sideways. Not forever, he said. Oh, hell, just about forever till the sun runs down, Bert. That's not forever. All right then, billions and billions of years. 20 billion, maybe. Are you satisfied? Lipov put his finger through his thinning hair. 20 billion years isn't forever. Well, it will last our time, won't it? What I say is that the sun won't last forever, that's all I'm saying. We're safe for 20 billion years, but then what? Lipov pointed a slightly shaky finger at the other. And don't say we'll switch to another sun. You know everything's got to run down someday. All right, who says they won't? You did, you poor sap. You said we had all the energy we needed forever. You said forever. It was Adol's turn to be contrary. Maybe we can build things up again someday, he said. No, never. Why not? 
Someday. Never. Ask Multivac. You ask Multivac, I dare you. Five dollars says it can be done. Adult phrased the necessary symbols and operations into a question which, in words, might have corresponded to this. Will one day mankind without the net expenditure of energy be able to restore the sun to its full youthfulness, even after it had died of old age? Or maybe it could be put more simply like this. How can the net amount of entropy of the universe be massively decreased? Multivac fell dead and silent. The slow flashing of light ceased. The distant sounds of clicking relays ended. Then there was a sudden spring to life of the teletip attached to that portion of the multivac. Five words were printed. Insufficient data for meaningful as. through hyperspace was completed. It is in a non-time lapse. At once, the even powdering stars gave way to the predominance of a single bright marble disk scented. That's X-23, said Gerard confidently, his thin hands clamped tightly behind his back and the knuckles whitened. Jared glanced at the bulge of featureless metal just under the ceiling of the spacecraft. Jared scarcely knew a thing about the deep world of metal, except that it was called a microbag. Someone had once told Jared that the AC at the end of microbag stood for analog computer in ancient English. But he was on the edge of forgetting even that. Geraldine's eyes were moist as she watched the busy plates. I can't help. I feel funny about leaving Earth. 
In their fastest youth, the only computers had been tremendous machine, taking a hundred square miles of land. There was only one to a planet. Planetary ACs, they were called. They had been growing in size steadily for a thousand years, and then, all at once, came refinement. In case of transistors, had come molecular valves, so that even the largest planetary ACs could be put into space, only half the volume of a spaceship. So many stars, so many planets, said Geraldine, busy with her own thoughts, I suppose family will be going out to new planets forever, the way we are now. Not forever, said Jared, with a smile. It will all stop someday. But not for billions of years, many billions. Even the stars run down, you know. Entropy must increase. What's entropy, Daddy? Trill Jared too. Entropy, little sweet, is just a word which means the amount of running down of the universe. Everything runs down, you know. Even like your little walkie-talkie robot, remember? Can't you just put in a new power unit, like with my robot? The stars are the power units, dear. Once they're gone, they are no more power units. Jerodette's one at once set up a cry. Don't let them, Daddy! Don't let the stars run down! Now, look at what you've done, whispered Geraldine, exasperated. How was I to know it would frighten them? Gerard whispered back. Ask the microvac, will Jerodette one? Ask him how to turn the stars on again. Go ahead, said Geraldine. It will quiet them down. Jared shrugged. Now, now, honeys. I will ask Microvac, don't worry, he will tell us. He asked the Microvac, adding quickly, print the answer. Jared kept the strip of scintillant film and said cheerfully, See, now, the microwave says it will take care of everything when the time comes, so don't worry. Sheridan said, and now children, it's time for bed. We'll be in our new home soon. Sherrod read the words on the cellulin film again before destroying it. Thank you.
three-dimensional, small-scale map of the galaxy and said Are we ridiculous, I wonder, in being so concerned about the matter? MQ-17K of Nikron shook his head I think not, you know, the galaxy will be filled in five years at the present rate of expansion and then considering immortality, we will fill another galaxy as a side issue, there's a problem of transportation. I wonder how many sun power units it will take to move galaxies of individuals from one galaxy to the next. A very good point. Already, mankind consumes two sun power units per year. Most of it is waste. Granted, but even with 100% efficiency, we can only stave off the end. Our energy requirements are going up in geometric progression, even faster than our population. We'll run out of energy even sooner than we run out of galaxies. A good point, a very good point. We'll just have to build new stars of interstellar gas. Or out of dissipated heat, said MQ-17J sarcastically. There may be some way to reverse entropy. We ought to ask the galactic AC. VJ23X was not really serious, but MQ17J pulled out his AC contact from his pocket and placed it on the table before him. I've half mine too, he said. It's something the human race will have to face someday. I stared somebody at a small AC contact. It was only two inches cubed and nothing in itself. But it was connected through hyperspace with the great galactic AC that served all mankind. Hyperspace considered. It was an integral part of the galactic AC. MQ17J has suddenly a this AC contact. Can entropy ever be reversed? VJ Trinity X looked startled and said at once, Oh, uh, say, I didn't really mean to have you ask that. Why not? We both know entropy can be reversed. You can turn smoke and ash back into a tree. Do you have trees on your world? asked MQ17J. The sound of the galactic AC startled them into silence. Its voice, calm and thin, beautiful, out of the small AC contact on the desk. It said,
I, and you and I, with them. It will take billions of years. I do not wish it to happen, even after billions of years. Universal AC, how my stars be kept from dying? This are wounds said in amusement. You are asking how entropy might be reversed in direction. And the Universal AC answered, there is as yet insufficient data for a meaningful answer. Man said, 
Collect additional data. The cosmic SC said, I will do so. I have been doing so for a hundred billion years. My predecessors and I have been asked this question many times. All the data I have remains insufficient. Will there come a time, said man, when data will be sufficient? Or is the problem insoluble in all conceivable circumstances? The cosmic AC said, no problem is insoluble in all conceivable circumstances. And man said, when will you have enough data to answer the question? There is, as yet, insufficient data for a meaningful answer. Data had yet to be completely correlated 
and put together in all possible relationship. A timeless interval was spent in doing that. And it came to pass that AC learned how to reverse the direction of entropy. But there was now no man to whom AC might give the answer of the last question. No matter, that answer by demonstration would take care of that too. For another timeless interval, AC thought how best to do it. Carefully, AC organized the program. The consciousness of AC encompassed all of what had once been a universe and brought it over what was now chaos. Step by step, it must be done. And AC said, let there be light. And in an incredible bang, there was light.